tornado. But for now, they are surveying the damage, and there's enough of that around. Tim Barber leading us off with our coverage. He's showing us one of the hardest hit areas. Tim? I'm standing next to this tree so you guys can get a look at how big this thing is. You see the roots on this side, and this is where it snapped in half and came crashing down on not one, but two cars. And this is just one example of some of the damage from the suspected tornado. The suspected tornado cut through concrete, uprooted trees, and disrupted nap time for Robin Austin's kids. We saw the wind pick up through the windows, and the house started to shake. Surveillance video from a bar shows the wind furiously swirling, picking up a car and tossing it like a toy while other debris comes crashing down. You don't realize the power of Mother Nature. You know, people underestimate it, you know. Mother Nature also ripped this sign off a gas station. It is also the suspected thief for the bicycle that hung under the sign for Buzz Carringer's bike shop. The rumbling roar like a freight train. And then the walls started shaking and tools started falling off the shelves and products started falling off the shelves. Most of the building behind the bike shop was demolished. Only a few concrete blocks and some mangled metal are left behind. This man says the rain was going sideways one way, then switched directions on a dime. First one I've ever seen like this anywhere I've been. I've been down in Texas, never saw a storm like this. This is what's left of Sarah Charles's dad's car, but Sarah is more hung up on the down power lines that cut out her internet. I can't survive without Wi-Fi. Yeah, I yeah. no Wi-Fi, that's the worst part of this? Yes. The best part is that nobody was seriously hurt. It's hard to say why it missed, maybe because I live a good life and it missed me. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We survived the tornado. What is there to worry about? <laughs> this is a shot of the cars from the other side. You can see just how much damage these trees did out here. Just take a look at this one. Absolutely blasted out the windows here. The cleanup is expected to take days out here. I talked to the mayor this afternoon. He said hundreds of homes were without power, but that has since been restored. Reporting live in Salisbury, Maryland, Tim Barber. ABC 7 News. Boy, that's terrifying when you see that video. Tim, thank you. We're in the Stormwatch 7 Weather Center right now after that possible tornado and soaking rain in the D.C. region really has been a weather day. Yeah. It has. And are we, we finished now? We are finished. We were lucky, though. We got away with just the heavy rain. Inch and three quarters. Waldorf in the district, about an inch and a half in Brandywine and Manassas. Thankfully, the heavy rain is over with, and now we have nicer weather that's on the way right. through, through the overnight. So everything's over here for you right now. A few showers remain around the D.C. metro area, not going about to a whole lot more as we move through the overnight hours. In fact, the heaviest of the rain now well to the south of us. Showers, thunderstorms around the Richmond area, southern tip of the Delmarva. No impact on the metro area, but it is going to stay a bit on the muggy side as we move through the overnight and can't rule out a little bit of patchy fog. Highs tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll make it into the lower 80s by about 4 o'clock. More sunshine, not quite as humid during the afternoon hours. Talking about the rest of the weekend into the upcoming weekend in just a few minutes. Jonathan? All right, Steve, thanks very much. And wild weather elsewhere tonight. Check this out. That rain finally stopped falling in San Antonio, Texas, but rescue teams had to save two people when their cars got stuck in high water. Check that out. He's on the roof of his SUV, and the water's all the way up to it. He's okay, a little embarrassed at getting stuck out there. He had about a 45 minute wait. Um, I, I can imagine that was pretty nerve wracking. To say the least, people living in low lying areas were told to evacuate their homes until the rain stopped. Up to five inches of rain fell in the city just today. New at 11 now, yet another case of road rage violence in our area. This time, a man was knocked unconscious on his way to Sunday church service. Kevin Lewis live outside that church in Bethesda with how this all happened. Kevin? And Allison, police say unlike many cases of road rage, this incident was totally unprovoked. In fact, officers add that the teen now charged with assault and disorderly conduct committed a similar act only last year. The story here goes that a family was offloading in front of this Arminian church in Bethesda when 19 year old Timothy May III allegedly started honking, cursing and making obscene gestures. Court documents state May proceeded to punch the family's 64-year-old grandfather in the face, knocking him unconscious. Well, this evening, May's father opened and then abruptly shut the front door of their Bethesda home. The Subaru Outback used in this road rage incident parked in the driveway. Neighbors speaking with us off camera told us May has been struggling lately. As for the neighborhood the church is in, folks explain traffic on Sundays can be a challenge, especially with no church parking lot, but they add it's no excuse 
for assault. Uh, nobody would approve of that whatsoever. Uh, this is not that kind of place, and I wonder if he was um, on full command of his faculties to do such a thing. And as wild as this may all sound, police say May's mother called this church claiming her son had been attacked. That is how Montgomery County Police were able to catch him. We're live in Bethesda. I'm Kevin Lewis, ABC 7 News. I'm Nancy Chin following developing news from the ABC 7 Live Desk. An investigation now underway after six inmates took keys from guards and had control of the doors at a maximum security prison in Arkansas. Three correctional officers were overpowered during the takeover, which lasted about three hours. Their injuries are said to be minor, but tonight one inmate who was not involved does remain in the hospital with injuries. The staff was released when the inmates surrendered after talks with staff and tonight the inmates involved are being held at a secure location at the prison. As for the prison itself, operations are back to normal. At the live desk, I'm Nancy Chen, ABC 7 News. All right, Nancy, thanks very much. And there is a search right now for an escaped inmate in Ohio. Somehow he got out of his shackles, fought off his guard and got away with the guard's gun. It happened during a transport. In a 911 call, the deputy says that Brandon Powell broke from his seatbelt and put him in a headlock. Powell is accused of rape. Police now are stressing, do not approach this man if you see him. Just call 911. Back at home now, no evacuations after a hazmat situation in Germantown. Crews shut down streets. They evaluated dozens of homes because of a gasoline odor. This started with a fire in a utility room in the 1900 block of Queens Cross Lane. Officials say there's no danger, but they are still looking into the source of that odor. A 14-year-old shot on the red line and appears as half